Mr. Nick. Mr. Nick, he's our pick. It's Mr. Nick. Yay! Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mr. Nick Show. And I'm your host, Mr. Nick. And this is my co-host, Allie. Hi. Today, we are going to be starting our new series about outer space. And this episode is going to be all about the sun. Let's get started. Let's start off with what is the sun? The sun is a star that's at the center of our solar system. Now, you may think that's a pretty big star because, well, we can see it more than any other stars in the sky, but it's actually just an average sized star. But because it's the closest star to Earth, that's how come we can see it so well. How close is it? Eh, only about 93 million miles from Earth, which that's pretty darn far. But even though it's about 93 million miles away from Earth, it only takes eight minutes for light to travel from the sun to Earth. Pretty, pretty fast, considering how far away it is. The sun is about 4.5 billion years old. That's really old. That's older than any grandparent or great-grandparent or great-great-great-great-great-grandparent you could ever imagine. And it's mostly made up of what's called helium and hydrogen. Now the sun is pretty hot, which is how come, you know, we can feel the heat from the sun. So on Earth, you know, it might get up to like 120, 130 degrees, which is really, really hot. The sun can get around 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like 100 times hotter. So the sun, like I said, is the center of our solar system. That means there's eight planets that rotate or orbit around the sun. So the sun doesn't go anywhere, but these planets, including Earth, which is the third closest to the sun, orbit around the sun. And how long does it take for Earth to orbit around the sun? 365 Point two six days. So what does that mean? 365 days? That's one year. It takes one year for the Earth to fully orbit around the sun. So what does that mean? Hmm, so if you're like six years old, that means you yourself have gone around the sun six times. That's pretty cool. And so even though the sun is an average sized star, it's huge. It's 110 times larger than Earth. That means you can fit 1 million Earths inside the sun. Yeah, take Earth and give it a million more, put it inside the sun. That's how big the sun is. And have you ever heard of a solar eclipse? A solar eclipse doesn't happen that often. And when it does, you can't even see it from all parts of Earth. But that's when the moon gets between the sun and Earth. So we'll talk about the moon in a different episode, and we'll talk about Earth in a different episode. But when the moon lines up between sun and Earth, that's a solar eclipse, and it only lasts for a couple of minutes. It's not safe to look directly at with your eyes without protection. And just cast a shadow from the moon onto the sun. It doesn't fully block the sun, but depending on where exactly it is, you can cast a pretty good shadow on the sun, which looks pretty cool when it happens. That was a lot of information about the sun, but I think it was pretty cool. That was a lot of information in a short amount of time, so I'm have to watch that episode again. But it is one of a few different episodes we're gonna have in this series all about outer space. Hey guys, you know what time it is. It's time for the joke of the day! <laughs> All right, Allie, are you ready for this one? Yes. Okay, why did the sun go to school? Mm, I don't know. To get brighter. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you liked that one. And be on the lookout for episodes about Earth, the moon, astronauts, our galaxy, the Milky Way. All right, if you guys liked that episode, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss all the other episodes. We'll see you next time. Bye! Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick, he's our pick. It's Mr. Nick. Yay! Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mr. Nick Show, and I'm your host, Mr. Nick. And this is my co-host, Allie. Hi! 
Today we're having another episode in our Outer Space series, and today it's all about the moon. Let's get started. The moon is Earth's only natural satellite. Now what does that mean? That means that it orbits around Earth. Now did you see our sun episode where we talked about how Earth orbits around the sun? Well, the moon orbits around Earth, and it's the only moon that we have. Now you may think, well, yeah, obviously, there are some planets that have over 70 or even over 80 satellites or moons. That's a lot of moons. But our moon that we see here on Earth is the fifth largest moon in the solar system. So that means that all the other moons, all those other planets, we have the fifth largest one. It takes 27.3 days for the moon to orbit around Earth. So that's almost a month, right? So that's basically four weeks for the moon to make it one full time around Earth. Now, how far is the moon from Earth? What's well, about 239,000 miles? And that's a long way, but it's a lot closer than the 93 million miles Earth is from the sun, if you saw the sun episode. How do we get to see the moon if it's out there in outer space? Well, the moon is lit up by the sun. That's right. So the moon is basically a gigantic rock in outer space, but the sunlight hits the moon and lights it up, which is how we can see it here on Earth. Sometimes you can see the moon during the day. Well, how's that happen? Well, the moon is actually above the Earth's horizon, so we could actually potentially see the moon for up to 12 hours a day, but we can only really see it for maybe six hours, seven hours at night because all other hours of the day, the sunlight that lights up our sky, is just too powerful for us to see the moonlight shining through. So the moon is actually in our sky for half the day. We just can't actually see it most of the time that it's up there. Now, if you take a look at the moon, you see all those craters and divots and just rocky shaped stuff. Well, the moon doesn't have an atmosphere to protect it from other things in outer space, so comets and asteroids over time have hit the moon, creating those craters. And did you know that we've actually had people go to the moon? Yeah, 1969, the first man to step on the moon was Neil Armstrong, and he went with Buzz Aldrin. They're the first guys to land on the moon. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That's what he said when he stepped on the moon for the first time. Now, did you know that the moon kind of goes through different phases each month? And the moon itself doesn't really change, but how much of the moon we can actually see does change, right? So a new moon, if you ever noticed you go outside and where's the moon? I don't see it. Where'd it go? We can't see it because of the way that the moon orbits around Earth and rotates, we can't actually see the moon sometimes, and that's called a new moon. The next phase is a waxing crescent. Take a look at the picture, and you can see how the waxing crescent, you can see that little sliver of the moon. And then you get the first quarter moon, and then a waxing gibbous, and then a full moon. We all know what a full moon is, right? So you can see the whole thing. And then after that, you get a waning gibbous. And then the last quarter or third quarter moon. And then the waning crescent. A little sliver right there. Yeah, those are the different phases of the moon each and every month. And let's talk about a lunar eclipse. Now, we talked about a solar eclipse on the sun episode. Let's talk about a lunar eclipse. That is when the Earth is in between the sun and the moon. That's blocking the sun's light from reaching the moon. Now, unlike a solar eclipse, this is actually pretty safe, or actually fully safe to look at, and it can last up to two hours. So that can make the, the moon look dimmer, and if it's 
fully like the earth is just perfectly in line, it gives it this orangish color called the blood moon. Pretty cool looking. And this only happens when it's a full moon, just so you know. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed learning all about the moon. And I learned something, I learned a lot actually, but you know when you see the moon during the day, like how, why is it still there? I learned, I did not actually know the moon was above the horizon for 12 hours a day. That's surprising. We just didn't, can't see it because of the sunlight. Sometimes though, I have seen it during the day and I always think it's kind of weird. Yeah, maybe the sunlight that day is just not that bright for whatever reason. I don't know, but I learned a lot today. I hope you guys did too. I hope you enjoyed it. And now it's time for the joke of the day. <laughs> All right, Allie, are you ready? Ready. How do you know when the moon has had enough to eat? I don't know. When it's full. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a good one. Yeah. All right, guys, I hope you liked this episode. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That way you can see all the other episodes that we're gonna do about outer space and all the other great episodes that we're doing. See you guys next time. Bye. Mr. Nick. Mr. Nick, he's our pig, it's Mr. Nick, yay! Hey everybody, welcome to the Mr. Nick Show, and I'm your host, Mr. Nick. This is my co-host, Allie. Hi. We're continuing our series on outer space, and today's episode is on the planet closest to the sun. Pretty hot, I bet. Mercury. So Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. How close is it? Just under 36 million miles away from the sun. Now, I know that sounds still really far, but Earth, the third closest to the sun, is 93 million miles away. So Mercury is 57 million miles closer to the sun than Earth. It's also the smallest planet in the solar system. And since Mercury is so close to the sun, it only takes 88 days to orbit the sun. So 88 days here on Earth is equal to almost three months. But in that same time for Mercury, it's already made one full orbit around the sun, which means that a year on Mercury only lasts 88 days. So in one year here on Earth, Mercury's already had over four Mercury years. So that means if you're five years old, on Mercury you'd be 20 years old. That's crazy. But Mercury rotates very, very slowly around its axis. So on Earth, it takes about 24 hours for one full rotation around its axis. Mercury, though, takes 176 Earth days for one full rotation around its axis. That's super, super slow compared to us on Earth. The surface of Mercury is full of craters, a lot like our moon here on Earth because it's been hit numerous times from asteroids and comets. Mercury is made up of rock and heavy metals, so it really doesn't have the ability to fix these holes and craters like we might have here on Earth. Once it gets hit, it just stays that way. I said that Mercury is the smallest planet in the solar system. It's a little more than one third the size of Earth across its equator. And Mercury is actually one of the five planets that you can see from Earth with your eye. Now you can't always see it, but it is a planet that occasionally you'll be able to see without the use of a telescope. Now you would think that because it's the closest planet to the Sun that it would also be the hottest. But that's not true. It's actually the second hottest planet from the Sun. Venus, in case you're wondering, is hotter. And that's because the average temperature on Mercury 
is 332 degrees Fahrenheit, which is still extremely hot. That's like the inside of an oven, and we could not live inside of an oven that's turned on because it's way too hot. But because it takes so long to rotate on its axis, a good portion of the planet is not facing the sun. So that means because there's no atmosphere to keep the temperature regulated, the side that's facing the sun is super, super duper, super hot. It can get up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, that's, that's like touching the fire. That is way too hot. That's crazy. But the other side of Mercury can get to be as cold as negative 279 degrees Fahrenheit. That's colder than anywhere on Earth. So while the side that is facing the sun can get to be so incredibly hot, the side not facing the sun, and because it takes so long to rotate onto its axis, it gets so incredibly cold that the average temperature on Mercury is the second hottest of any of the planets. All right, we hope that you had a great time learning about Mercury. That's a hot place right there. All right, guys, now it's time for the joke of the day. You ready, Allie? Ready. How do aliens put their babies to sleep? I don't know. They rock it. <laughs> rock it, rock it. All right. Hey, if you guys like that episode, give it a thumbs up, like it, and also subscribe to the channel so you can see all the other great episodes that we're doing. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick, he's our pig. It's Mr. Nick. Yay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mr. Nick Show, and I'm your host, Mr. Nick, and this is my co-host, Allie. Hi. Today, we are continuing our series on outer space, and we're talking about the planet Venus today. Let's get started. Venus is the second planet from the sun, and it is only just slightly smaller than Earth. Venus is the second brightest object in our night's sky behind the moon, so when you look up in the sky at night, obviously the moon is very bright. And all the stars in the sky, but Venus is brighter than any star in our sky. Venus doesn't have any moons or rings around it. The only other planet that doesn't have any moons or rings is Mercury. The average temperature on Venus is 864 degrees Fahrenheit, and the high is about 896 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot enough to melt lead, super hot. Those temperatures make Venus the hottest planet in our solar system. Now, if it's the second planet from the sun behind Mercury, why is it hotter than Mercury? Well, because if you saw the Mercury episode, you see that Mercury doesn't have a really good atmosphere to hold its temperature in. But Venus's temperatures stay consistently hot, partly because it has a very dense atmosphere. Well, what does that mean that the atmosphere is dense? Well, the atmosphere in Venus is made up of 96.5% carbon dioxide. So basically, imagine that if the entire sky all across Earth was just smog, smoke, and just thick, yucky, nasty smog, that was basically the density of the atmosphere in Venus. So it keeps all the temperature in and doesn't really let it leave. So if you were on Venus, you wouldn't even be able to see the sun or Earth because of how dense and thick the clouds are that are always covering the skies. 
and the clouds reflect the sun like a mirror, which is why it is the second brightest object in Earth's night sky. So the sun hits Venus in those thick, yucky clouds, reflect the sun's light off of it, and that's why we can see it so well at night. Now, Venus has 167 large volcanoes that are over 60 miles across. Just to put that into perspective, Earth only has one such volcano structure that's that large, and that's the Big Island of Hawaii. Venus rotates on its axis once every 243 Earth days, and it rotates in the opposite direction that Earth does, which means the sun rises in the west and sets in the east. But if it makes one full rotation on its axis every 243 Earth days, that means that it rotates very, very, very slowly. And Venus only takes 224.7 Earth days to rotate once around the sun. So that means that a day on Venus lasts longer than a year on Venus. Because if it takes 224.7 days to make an orbit around the sun, but it takes 243 Earth days to rotate once on its axis, that means that a year on Venus is shorter than a day on Venus. And Venus is the only planet named after a Greek goddess. All the other planets are named after male Greek gods, but not Venus. Venus is named after the Greek goddess of love. All right, everybody. We hope that you had a great time learning about the planet Venus. And now it's time for the joke of the day. All right. Are you ready? Ready. Knock, knock. Who's there? Alien. Alien who? How many aliens do you know? <laughs> oh, okay, well, I guess that's why you asked alien who. I thought maybe you're like, oh, I know one, two, three, four, five. Who, which one is it? All right, everybody. If you like that episode, like it. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so you can see all the great episodes we're doing. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Mr. Nick. Mr. Nick, he's our pig. It's Mr. Nick. Yay! Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mr. Nick Show, and I'm your host, Mr. Nick. And this is my co-host, Allie. Hi. Today, we're continuing our series on outer space, and we're talking about the planet we live on, Earth. I'm excited because I mean, this is where we live. It's kind of cool to know about it, right? right? Let's talk about it. So Earth is the third planet from the sun. Now, if you saw our sun episode, then you know that eight planets orbit around the sun and Earth is the third from the sun. Earth is about 4.5 billion years old. That's so old. And it's the only planet known to actually have life on it, meaning living animals, organisms, plants, Earth is the only planet that has life on it. Now, it's the third from the sun. I think that's pretty close, but that's still about 93 million miles from the sun. That's how far we are, but it seems to be the right amount because if we were too close, it'd be too hot. And if we were too far away, it wouldn't be warm enough. So 93 million miles, I guess, seems about right. Now, Earth takes 365.26 days to orbit around the sun. So Earth travels all the way around the sun and that happens in 365.26 days, which is one year. And you say, what about that other 0.26 days? Well, that's how come every four years we have a leap year with that extra day added to the calendar. Earth has one moon. So the moon that we see every night orbits around Earth. Some planets have many, many, many moons. 
we have one. And the earth also has an axis, kind of going through the middle of it, that it rotates on. So as the earth slowly travels around the sun, it's also slowly spinning. And that takes 24 hours to rotate on its axis, which equals one day. Actually, it takes 23 hours, 56 minutes, and four seconds to rotate on its axis, which is why it takes just over that one year to orbit the sun. And Earth is not perfectly round. It's a geoid shape, which means that it bulges a little bit in the middle around the equator. Now, in case you didn't know, around the equator, which is the center, it's like your belt, if you were to wear a belt around your pants in the center, that's where we have the hottest temperatures on Earth. The closer you get to the equator, the hotter it is. Well, why is that? Well, if it bulges out a little bit there, that means that part is closer to the sun, which makes it a little bit hotter. That makes sense. Now, 70% of Earth is covered in water, oceans, and lakes, and rivers. And the other 30% is ground that we can see above the sea level. So actually, if you took away all the water, there'd be ground everywhere, but water covers 70% of the ground, and the other 30% is above sea level, and we can see that. That's what we live on. Now I have a question. Why is the sky blue? Well, the sky is blue because sunlight coming from the sun hits the Earth's atmosphere and scatters in all different directions. Blue light rays scatters more than the other colors because it travels in shorter, smaller waves. And this is why the sky appears to be blue, because we can see the blue light waves better than the other light waves. Now, hold on, I said the sun's light comes and hits the Earth's atmosphere, but what is the Earth's atmosphere? The atmosphere is a protective barrier for our planet. It's like a jacket. And there's layers that travel from the ground all the way to outer space. And our atmosphere keeps us warm. It gives us the oxygen that we breathe. It also is why we have different seasons and weather. Yeah, without the Earth's atmosphere protecting us, we wouldn't be able to make it. So that protective layer, and that sunlight comes from the sun, hits the atmosphere, scatters in all different directions. Could you imagine if purple rays were the shortest and easiest to see our sky would be purple that'd be kind of crazy huh all right well that was a lot of information about earth and there's so much more we can get into but man it gets pretty complicated so i hope that was a good intro for you guys i hope you enjoyed it and if you did watch all the other episodes that we're doing about space earth the moon the sun everything all right guys you know what time it is it's time for the joke of the day are you ready Allie? Okay, how do you know that the ocean is nice? Mm, I don't know. Because it waves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you liked that one. If you did, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so you see all of the episodes that we're doing. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Mr. Nick. Mr. Nick, he's our pick. It's Mr. Nick. Yay! Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mr. Nick Show, and I'm your host, Mr. Nick. And this is my co-host, Allie. Hi. We're continuing our series on outer space, and today we're talking about the planet Mars. Mars is the fourth planet from the sun, and it is the second smallest planet in our solar system. Mars was named after the Roman god of war, Mars. Mars is called the red planet because it has high amounts of iron on the surface, which makes it red. Mars has two moons. 
One of them is so close to Mars that it orbits around Mars three times in a day. That moon keeps getting about six feet closer to Mars every 100 years. Eventually, it will either crash into Mars or it will break up in the atmosphere and form a ring around Mars. Mars has the largest mountain in the solar system and it is called Olympus Mons. It is about 374 miles in diameter which makes it about the same size as Arizona. On at least five different occasions, pieces of Mars have broken off and fallen to Earth. The most recent time was in 2011. Pieces were found in the desert of Morocco. It is thought that they broke off of Mars after being hit by a meteorite. Could you imagine finding pieces of Mars on Earth? People actually own pieces of Mars. Wouldn't that be so crazy to touch a piece of Mars? There have been several attempts to travel to Mars, not yet by humans, but a lot of people wonder if humans would be able to make it on Mars. Well, let's talk about that. Mars has a high temperature of only about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's near its equator, which is in the middle. That's about as hot as it gets on Mars. 70 degrees Fahrenheit, that's comfortable, but if that's as hot as it gets, that means it can get pretty cold too. Now, of course, humans also need oxygen to breathe in order to survive. On Earth, the Earth's atmosphere is about 21% oxygen, but on Mars, less than 1% oxygen, 0.145% oxygen in the atmosphere on Mars is not going to get it done when it comes to how much oxygen we need. So that means people would have to wear an oxygen breathing apparatus at all times or possibly a big dome or several domes could maybe be built if oxygen was pumped into them. So I guess it is possible that people could live on Mars, but there would definitely need to be some changes made so that we could breathe, which, you know, is kind of a basic need to live. And one other thing when it comes to living on Mars, remember how I said that pieces of Mars have broken off and they think that maybe it's because of meteorites hitting Mars? Yeah, Mars has a lot of craters on it, which means it's been hit by meteorites. I don't think I necessarily want to live somewhere where I might get hit by a meteorite just walking down the street. But I guess if they built a dome and it was strong enough to withstand a meteorite strike, you never know. All right, everybody. Hope you had a great time learning all about Mars. That's an interesting planet. All right, do you know what time it is? It's time for the joke of the day. Okay, Allie, are you ready? Ready. What's fast, loud, and crunchy? Ooh, well, I don't know. A rocket chip. <laughs> All right, everybody, I hope you liked that episode. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you see all of our other great episodes we're doing, not just about outer space, but everything. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Mr. Nick. Mr. Nick, he's our pig. It's Mr. Nick. Yay! Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mr. Nick Show, and I'm your host, Mr. Nick. And this is my co-host, Allie. Hi. Today, we are continuing our series talking about outer space, and we're talking about the planet Jupiter. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the sun, and it is the largest planet in the solar system. Jupiter is also the most massive planet, and it is two and a half times more massive than all of the other planets combined. Jupiter is mainly made up of gas and liquid and is called a gas giant. It is mostly made up of hydrogen and helium. 
Jupiter rotates on its axis in less than 10 hours. That's very fast. Earth rotates on its axis every basically 24 hours, but Jupiter does it in less than 10 hours. Jupiter is usually the third brightest object in the night sky when you're on Earth. The only two objects more bright than Jupiter is typically the Moon and Venus. Robotic spacecrafts have explored Jupiter eight times. Eight different times we have had robotic spacecrafts around Jupiter exploring it. The most recent time was not that long ago. It was in 2016. And more explorations are planned for the future. And Jupiter has 79 moons. The four largest moons of Jupiter can be seen from Earth on a clear night with the use of binoculars. And Jupiter has a very faint ring system. The rings seem to be mostly made of moon dust and rocks from the 79 moons that orbit around Jupiter, as opposed to ice like Saturn's rings are made of. If you look at Jupiter, you see what is called the Great Red Spot, and that is an ongoing storm that has been going on for nearly 200 years, possibly much longer. The Great Red Spot, this gigantic storm, is larger than Earth, but it does seem to be getting smaller in size as time goes on. Now, Jupiter has an average temperature of negative 234 degrees Fahrenheit. That is so, so cold, freezing. And most of the heat is generated from inside the planet itself, not the sun. It does get some heat from the sun, but it is so far away from the sun. Most of its heat is actually generated from what's going on inside the planet. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoy learning all about Jupiter today. And now it's time for the joke of the day. You ready? Ready. What is a cow's favorite part about outer space? I don't know. The moon. <laughs> oh, okay. you ready, I did. All right, everybody, I hope you liked this episode. If you did, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel so you see all the other great episodes that we're doing. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye! Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick, he's our pig. It's Mr. Nick. Yay! Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mr. Nick Show. And I'm your host, Mr. Nick. And this is my co-host, Allie. Hi! Today, we are continuing our series on outer space. And today, we're talking about the planet with all the rings. Saturn. Saturn is the sixth planet from the sun. And it is the second largest in the solar system. Saturn is named after the Roman god of wealth and agriculture, Saturnus. And this is the same person that the day Saturday was named after. Saturn is the furthest planet from Earth that can be seen without binoculars or a telescope. It is a gas giant that is made mostly of hydrogen and helium. Saturn is famous for its rings, mostly made of ice and small amounts of carbon dust. These rings stretch out more than 75,000 miles from Saturn, but they are only seven feet thick. Saturn has 82 moons. The 20 most recent moons were discovered just in 2019. Every single one of Saturn's moons are frozen. One of them appears to have an ocean below its frozen surface. In addition to its 82 moons, 
Saturn also has a number of moonlets, little tiny moons. In total, it has 150 moons and moonlets. Four different spacecraft have visited and studied Saturn. Cassini orbited Saturn for 13 years. The average temperature is negative 285 degrees Fahrenheit. That is unimaginably cold if you ask me. And the wind speeds on Saturn have been measured at just over 1,000 miles per hour. I, I mean, that's incredible. You couldn't even go out, you wouldn't be able to stand. 1,000 miles per hour just blow you away. That's amazing. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode all about Saturn. And now it's time for the joke of the day. Hey. Okay, are you ready? Ready. What time do astronauts eat lunch? Close at launch time. <laughs> All right, everybody. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel so you see all the great episodes we're doing. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick, he's our pick. It's Mr. Nick. Yay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mr. Nick Show. And I'm your host, Mr. Nick. And this is my co-host, Allie. Today, we are continuing our series on outer space, and today's episode is about the planet Uranus. Uranus is the seventh planet from the sun, and it is the third largest planet in the solar system. Uranus was originally named Georgium Sidus in 1783 in honor of England's King George III. The name was later changed to Uranus. Nearly all of the planets get their names from Roman mythology. Uranus is the only planet that gets its name from a Greek god. The Greek god of the sky is Uranus. The Romans and the Greeks recognized the same gods but gave them different names. When the name of the planet was changed from Georgium Sidus, Uranus was proposed because he was the father of Saturn, and Saturn was the father of Jupiter, so this continued the family naming lineage. It is unknown why they used the Greek name of Uranus instead of the Roman name like they did for every other planet. If they would have used the Roman name, then this planet would have been called Calus. Uranus is 1.79 billion miles away from the sun, and it is known as the Ice Giant. It is the coldest planet even though it is closer to the sun than Neptune. The coldest temperature is lower than negative 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Uranus has 27 moons and possibly up to 13 rings. It is thought that the rings were created by meteor and moon impacts with the planet. Uranus is known as the blue planet because the methane gas in the atmosphere reflects the sun's blue light waves back into space. This is why the planet appears blue. All right, everybody, we hope you enjoyed this episode today. I know that we did. And now it's time for the joke of the day. Are you ready? What do astronauts serve dinner on? I don't know. Flying saucers. <laughs> All right, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel so you see all the other great episodes that we're doing. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Mr. Nick, 
Mr. Nick, he's our pick. It's Mr. Nick. Yay! Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mr. Nick Show, and I'm your host, Mr. Nick. And this is my co-host, Allie. Hi. Today, we are continuing our series on outer space, and our episode today is on the planet Neptune. Neptune is the eighth planet from the sun. It is the fourth largest planet in diameter and the third largest planet in terms of its mass. Neptune was named after the Roman god of the sea. It is so far away from Earth that you cannot see it from Earth without the use of a telescope. Only one spacecraft has ever flown past Neptune. That was Voyager 2 in 1989, and it took the first close-up photos of Neptune. This is when the Great Dark Spot was discovered. What's the Great Dark Spot? Well, like Jupiter's Great Red Spot, the Great Dark Spot is a storm, and it is about the size of Earth. Neptune also has a small dark spot, and that is a storm the size of Earth's moon. Both dark spots, or storms, seem to only last a handful of years, unlike the red spot of Jupiter that lasts for hundreds of years. Neptune has a very faint ring system made up of ice particles and small grains of dust covered with carbon. And Neptune only has three rings. Neptune is 2.8 billion miles away from the sun. And since it is so far away from the sun, it takes so long to orbit around the sun. In fact, it takes almost 165 years for it to orbit the sun one time. And since it is so far from the sun, it is very, very cold. The average surface temperature of Neptune is negative 353 degrees Fahrenheit. Neptune has 14 moons that we currently know of and the largest moon is called Triton. Triton may have once been a dwarf planet that got caught up in Neptune's gravitational field and became a moon. Triton is the coldest place known in the solar system with a recorded surface temperature of negative 391 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the coldest place in the solar system. All right, everybody, we hope you enjoyed this episode all about Neptune. And now it's time for the joke of the day. <laughs> all right, are you ready? Ready. What do the planets like to sing? I don't know. Neptunes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Allie. Hey, if you guys like this episode, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel so you see all the great episodes we're doing. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick, he's our pick. It's Mr. Nick. Yay.